I'll call the May 19th, 2014 Brattleboro Development Review Board meeting to order. Uh, and initially note that we have six uh, members available tonight. Uh, we may have others trickling in. Uh, so I will appoint all of those who are alternates to hear all matters before the board tonight. I'm like, who is an alternate? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, David and Becca. Uh, and note for any applicants that uh, applications before the Development Review Board need a, oh, there's Dr. Char. So I will save that warning. Um, I will note that uh, applications before the DRB need four affirmative votes, even if we only have six or five or four members, but we will have at least seven before the, for all applications tonight. Um, and I will make a few opening remarks. Uh, here at the Brattleboro Development Review Board, we hear applications for land development in the town of Brattleboro, and we hear them on the record. Uh, which means uh, we are very careful to take a good and thorough uh, record of all of the testimony and information provided to the board um, and that any appeal of our decision uh, to the environmental court is heard um, um, on the record such that there is no new trial, um, that the uh, environmental court reviews the testimony and information that we've collected and double checks to make sure we've made a good decision. Uh, but um, does uh, simplify the appeals process by um, not having a second hearing before the, the environmental court. Therefore, it is very important that if any members of the public or applicants uh, wish to introduce uh, evidence uh, that will be considered by this board and possibly by the um, uh, environmental court and God forbid the Vermont Supreme Court, um, that you uh, do so now. And in a minute, I will ask all of the uh, applicants and um, uh, interested parties and members of the public um, to take an oath. But before I do that, uh, I'm going to ask to see if this uh, meeting has been properly warned. Uh, yes, it has. It has been properly warned. Uh, and do any of the members of the board have conflicts of interest um, or ex parte communications that they would like to disclose? Uh, as I have done before, uh, I typically point out that Bob Stevens and I each own 20% of a company that owns 38% of a company that owns 99% of the Brooks House. Uh, I don't think that will uh, affect my ability to be partial, uh, impartial rather, um, uh, and just make note of that. If anyone has any uh, questions or concerns about that, please let me know. Um, so now I will ask that all members of the public and all those applicants uh, please rise and take the following oath. Uh, do you uh, affirm that the evidence you shall give and the cause under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Thank you. And I think that might be it. Uh, I'll call application 2014 024, Reginald Amadon and John McKay, request for site plan and conditional use approval to permit the 1989 conversion of a two-unit dwelling into a four-unit dwelling. I do not see Mr. Amadon or Mr. McKay. Uh, this has been continued once, just once? Just once. Any, any word from the applicant? Heard from them, What's that? I haven't heard from them after contacting them after the last hearing. All right, let's give them one more shot. Uh, looking for a motion to continue this hearing to June 16th. Is that, is that our next meeting? Third Monday in June? June 16th, 2014. So moved. So moved and second. seconded. And seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. That, uh, I abstain. That carries 601. And can you let them know that? Um, uh, we'll continue it until the June hearing, but if it's um, denied, it'll be denied with it'll be denied without prejudice for a reapplication. But it'll be denied and not continued after after June. Okay. All right. We'll thanks, Brian. Um, I'll call application two thousand fourteen zero three three uh, Stevens and Associates for Hunter Daily Properties site plan and conditional use approval. Oh, and members of the board, you should probably should keep the Amadon application for next month. 
I think the applicants have been before the board with respect to this application previously and maybe received some preliminary review or was that just a was just a consultation concept. concept? Review, yeah. yeah. Um, so is everybody here for that? Anyone not here? You could catch us up to speed on the, the changes. Um, since then, uh, and uh, on your application, we'd appreciate it. Sure. So I'm Bob Stevens with Stevens Associates. Uh, Bill Daly from my country, Daly. And Judy Daly. So <coughs> we're here tonight to ask for uh, site plan approval for a modification of a building next to the country, Daly. This is the country, Daly on Western Avenue. Western Avenue is here. Um, what was the former Shell building? Can you guys see this? Back that up a little bit. Um, this is a total reconstruction of um, what is what was there. Um, a new building, a building that we hope will look something like this. It's uh, sort of a kind of a little welcome station, train station-esque kind of building in the back to serve as a um, as a neighborhood store, but um, also sort of uh, bathrooms for traveling public and. Um, and uh, sort of convenient parking as well. The building is located um, in the back of the lot, sort of similar to where the current uh, Shell Station building is located without the awning. Um, it's surrounded by a patio area which has a pergola on this side that overlooks the waterfall. There's a whole set of falls down, way down in the back, which is where the, the Whetstone Brook sits. Um, and <coughs> we've done sort of some significant changes to access and circulation. Um, a lot of that has been reducing curb cuts. I think I added up, there's like 160 feet of curb cut, maybe 140 feet, and we're down to 70. A curb cut on this end, which is 28 feet, and then one on Williams Street as far down away from this intersection as we can get. Right now the whole curb cut is open on the corner. Try to clean up the circulation. Um, there's 14 parking spaces divided by islands and pedestrian systems through here. Um, really to make it easy to get in and out and um, sort of improve the streetscape as well. We're trying to provide a continuous sidewalk and then some clear distinct places both to cross over to the country deli and to cross across here to the, to the front of the, of the new store. Um, other issues, I think um, we've had some questions about what's happening for um, uh, erosion control. So I think there's been a supplemental plan submitted that has uh, silt fence shown uh, down below the hillside. We have some significant excavation that happened to this building because of some soft soils and fill soils out there. So we're going to be digging pretty deep to start that and we'll be down the bank a little bit. Um, we are looking, this project actually uh, is a net reduction in impervious surfaces. Somewhere there's an exhibit in here. Uh, yeah, I think it looks like this. Um, the, um, the blue is actually pervious. You'll see that it includes the patio area because we're using pervious pavers out there. Uh, and so we actually, I think, have a, a net reduction or, of uh, 1,700 uh, square feet of <coughs> new impervious. So we think we'll be reducing <coughs> the stormwater runoff from the site when we're all done. Uh, any significant grading, any regrading of that parking lot? It stays, it's doing the same thing that it's doing now. We are regrading, there's sort of a division point here where this flows overland off the back bank and down in this direction and then everything else flows here and goes out <coughs> on, uh, onto William Street. Um, so no, no real changes. This building in the, in the um, patio is being leveled out. So this does drop grade, uh, drops about six to eight inches across the front of that and we're trying to sort of level both the building and the patio area around it. Um, there is no, um, there's no stormwater systems on the site. We're really uh, just trying to keep the grades at, at an appropriate slope and get the water to move the water through and get it back into the gutter really out on William Street, which is where it goes. And the idea, it would sheet off the, the back, not, not into a channel? or Yeah, this is all sort of, actually it's the current condition and it is all sheet flowing off this way. Everything else from here, from the ridge line forward, is going to end up in the gutter on William Street, which is what, what, well, actually what happens now is it goes out on the gutter on William Street here. We're just moving it up to this curb, curb cut so we can sort of narrow that curb cut opening. But it ends up in the same place with, uh, with actually a reduction. And then it hits a, it hits a stormwater system. Yeah, there's system a catch basin. Uh, uh, let's back see. 
can see it on this plan. I thought it was sort of within sight, at least on this cur on this curve line. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm one of the other draw drawings. <coughs> so there is a storm drainage system down down at William Street, and actually there's one out here on um, Western Avenue, but we're too low to sort of tie into that, as it turns out. And what makes a paver pervious? Uh, it's the type of pavers, and it's the type of subbase, actually. You put stone and, and a filter material below it, and then they fabricate uh, concrete unit pavers that have gaps uh, in the side. I mean, they do make pervious concrete and pervious asphalt these days, but the paver, pavers themselves are typically um, have an eighth of an inch gap around the edges, and take a tremendous amount of water. Um, the co-op parking lot, you know, those brick pavers that you see, those are all pervious pavers. So if you go out there after a rainstorm, you'll see it's very flatly graded. The water just sinks into the ground and, and, and goes away. It does not mm -hmm. run off. Um, and even though it looks, I mean, the pavers themselves are impervious, but there's little gaps that sort of stay open that allow the water to sink in. And it's actually pretty uh, amazingly pervious, uh, the way that mm -hmm. that works. Yeah. And what, uh, over time, why won't those gaps fill in? They might. You have to. You have to do some maintenance. Over time, they start to plug up, and uh, there's a sort of a vacuum machine that goes out and sucks the grit out of them. But the studies that have been done have shown actually that it takes a long time. You, you have to be careful how you maintain them. You don't use salt. Um, in fact, often you don't need to because the water, when the snow melts, it just sort of goes away. But if you use a lot of sand or other things, you'll blind that sooner than you would otherwise. Um, so there is some maintenance, um, but they performed amazingly well. And actually, it turns out the University of New Hampshire is uh, sort of the regional expert. They've studied pervious pavements for, I don't know, Corey's here, you can tell me, 10 or 15 years, and have had uh, some pretty, um, you know, impressive results on using them. So we, you know, we use them as a matter of course. On pavers, they're, you know, the cost, there isn't really a big cost differential to go that direction. And there have been occasions, um, the... Uh, uh, we used a pervious asphalt on um, uh, Renew. Renew Salvage on their new parking lot out back um, five years ago, something like that. Yeah. That's about right. Yeah. And uh, it seems like that's held up pretty well. And uh, we have some pervious concrete out at the hospital on a sidewalk that we didn't want to design for. That's been in for longer than five years, and I think that's held up pretty well, too. So, yeah, yeah we have some history with that. What about the water that comes down the back? half of the roof? Uh, the back half just, it, it's basically spread out along that bank and it continues going down. Um, I think in the application, we own a fair amount of woodland before you get to the brook. So it is, um, you know, the back half of the building is impervious, but it hits and gets distributed along the bank and then gets filtered as it runs down, down and back. Um, yeah, we have at least the, the width of the this site again, I, whatever this width is, there's that again before you get to the brook down and back. A pretty steep <coughs> hillside back there. I saw a note about a silt fence back there. Yeah. What is that? Um, it's an erosion control fabric that uh, gets dug into the ground and it means that if you get um, soil that starts washing down, it the fabric allows the water to pass through, but the soil does not. So it collects the soil and keeps it from running down and into the stream or reduces the rivulets. If you start getting silt erosion on a steep bank, it'll stop that at the fence and then it may start up again on the other side. But we use that as, as one tool for erosion control. It's a fairly small site, you know, so it, it, as much as we're trying to make a nice building out there, it's going to get dug up and put back together pretty quickly. Um, so there isn't a lot of earthwork per se. Is the plan to let people turn left out of the eastern? Here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this curb cut, actually the curb cut that's there now is on the corner. So you exit right into the intersection. We moved it down as far as we could get it here to allow at least one car to get out and get queued up in that turning lane for Western Avenue. Are there two <laughs> Not lanes great. coming here? out of there? Yeah. Uh, this is 24 feet. It's, it's wider than 24 because it's a skewed intersection. But it's this width behind the parking space is 24 feet because we need to get cars to back out and, and have enough room to get to maneuver in and out of these parking spaces. And that translates into whatever this curb cut, which is about 40 feet. Um, oh, that's why it's that? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's 40 feet because the 24 is working this way and you hit this skew and it just works out that it turns to be a, a longer curb cut. But that's all driven off of being able to get two-way traffic here and get cars in and out of these spaces. Um, so that, that's kind of what drives that, that, that curve cut width. We narrowed it up as much as we could. 
wanting really to try to improve that, get some islands and, and kind of neck that down. So will it be one directional? No, it's two directional. I mean, it's always better. You know, you, you might think, well, make it one directional, you'll simplify things, but it sort of forces people, if you were coming up William Street, you know, to go out on the Western Avenue and in. So this way, people can come in and out. People can go right on Williams, um, you know, or in or out on this intersection. If you're heading, you know, westbound on Western Avenue, I'm not sure I'd go that way. I think I'd come back out here and take a left. Um, so uh, that just helps spread it out uh, a little bit. There's a couple of site lights. I don't know if I mentioned them, just a few. We think we've got the lighting level at, at an appropriate level. Um, we are asking, we have a sign application before you, and uh, that sign is larger than the conforming uh, sign for this district. This is a residential district, even though these, these types of uses there. And the residential zone is a six square feet. I think sign size. For a ground sign. Yeah, yes. for ground sign. We're asking for 24 square feet based on a pre-existing non-conforming sign. So there was a sign for the Shell Station. I think we have some an exhibit to hand out of what was there. And um, as we read the ordinance, we're going to pass this around. And it's about 60 square feet of what was up there on that. That sign's been removed because of the change in use, but there's a, a couple of... Um, provisions that allow you to consider something larger. One is that there's a significant reduction in nonconformity, which we think there is from 60 to 24, which is what we're proposing, something that's four by six. And the second is that there's something that unusual or extenuating physical circumstances. And the only thing I would say is that this road, although it's residential in this location for the, the uh, amount of traffic that's out here, we think a six of three by two foot sign, three by two this size, um, would be, um, you know, difficult for people to see on this road and in this location. Um, so the four by six uh, is... Uh, uh, where will that sign be again? Right, right here. Similar location to where that one oh, is, right, actually. Right. At, at the entrance, sort of upstream on, uh, on, on, on the eastbound lane on Western Avenue. Any signage on the, the building? I'm sure you're going to have yes. something on the building. I'm not sure we've applied for it yet or yeah. shown what that is. Um, we're allowed probably another six square feet on the building, I think. Uh, I think it's 12, but is that what it is? I have to look yeah, it. I think we were we were planning on conforming on that one. At least that was my understanding. Yeah. So, I think the buildings now are are painted a similar color and yes. identified as as being uh, affiliated as, uh, just through color. It looks like it's. It works for me. I mean, as I drive by, it seems to be that, that there's some parking in that space already for yes. for uh, patrons over at the Vermont Country Deli. Yes. Uh, yeah, we are. You know, we're applying. You know, as separate lots with this because you know we'd like this to be a standalone project. Um, we realize I think we're providing a little more, a few more parking spaces than would be normally allowed for a neighborhood store. But whether it's um, we can certainly meet the minimum requirements for having a store here without uh, tying it to the other building. And we also think that its location, uh, it's going to get a fair amount of traffic. Uh, and uh, as we know, you know, there's a lot of parking over there where people can park here and walk over. So that's a service that we think will just help the situation. <coughs> but we'd rather not tie the two of these things together. It's been suggested of deeds and things to, you know, connect with shared parking. And, and again, we don't think that that's... Um, necessary or even appropriate for this as a standalone. If we were coming in for the country deli, it might be appropriate to say, we need you to prove that you've got parking here to function that, but this one does pretty well uh, with what we're showing. Um, that very last parking spot nearest the sign. Here? Yeah. Yeah. If someone were to pull out of that, is there, like, it just seems very close to the road, yeah. the crosswalk for a car pulling out of that spot. Well, you know, you have to be careful, but um, you can pull out this way. I mean, there's enough room to sort of back this way and then pull back out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't have to drive, you don't have to back out into the street, which you could do. And you're right, you know, it's tight. It's a very tight um, site. And part of that is because we're trying to introduce these islands and, and um, you know, break this up in a way um, we may have an existing conditions. I think there's parking there now. Yes, sir. You know, so it's functioned that way for quite a while as a gas station, and uh, in some ways we're kind of we're kind of uh, reducing it, if you will. Aren't those parallel spots? 
we're showing them parallel, but I don't know that people necessarily follow that. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure they followed anything out there. Uh, yeah, it was all paved, basically. So people kind of did what they wanted to do. The spot was there. I mean, that's where you're starting. Right. It was about 12 feet in. Yeah. There was a mention of uh, you withdrawing an application for a ground zone. Is that just a run issue? Uh, I didn't think we were withdrawing yeah. an application. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was still in there. Yeah. yeah. That may have been some confusion on our part. But th there was never a plan for another sign. No, no. Yeah. We're, not, we're not applying for anything else. Yeah. Is there uh, any any reasons that this might conflict with long-term plans for Western Avenue around there? Uh, I don't know why it would. I mean, I mean, from time to time, there's been talk about the possibility of widening it, of maybe oh, oh, closing one of the legs on that fork, or yeah. putting in a light or trying to do something there. Yeah. Well, we did explore, as we first rolled this out, the potential of doing something with that leg on William Street um, and looked at um, making some modifications. In fact, we think that this would benefit from a one-way one loop around the building and turning this more to 90 degree and bolting this out to shorten this crossing. Um, and what we ended up realizing is that all of that is something that takes a long period of time and a lot of parties to work through, whereas this plan doesn't prevent any of that from happening in the future and, and uh, sort of stays out of that, if you will. We're doing, we're doing an incremental improvement, and we've got now a sidewalk through. We've got a clear crossing area, uh, but you could do better with working with the town to reconfigure that road. And this, uh, this project also didn't have the resources to start getting into redoing roadways either, so it needed to be a, more of a community effort to do that. But I think we'd welcome that. It would help clean these things up and maybe make that connection a little stronger uh, if you could do that. So I think there are some good solutions around it. In, uh, in one of your concept plans, there was a proposed pathway and overlook for the waterfall. Yep. Has that died or is it really not it, here? It'd be, a, sure. it'd be a second or third phase. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of a future uh, plan at this point. So, so conceptually, not, we wanted to make sure we could it's do not that. Part of this. It's not okay. part of this. Yeah. There are some old project. foundations down there from a uh, mill that used to be on the site. And it's a beautiful spot. So <laughs> one of the part of this design was designing it so that we could connect to that. Think about that. Make sure we could connect to that uh, as an outdoor spot. Do, do uh, folks go down there much time? Because I've I, I grabbed a sandwich and yes. walked down and looked over. And it's yes, they do. And there are people go down there. They fish. They swim. swim. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's quite considerable traffic down there during the not, not the winter season. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that Maybe the board shares my sentiment that we don't want to punish folks for aspirational plans early on in the uh, uh, in the uh, development phase. And, but if you were able to do that, that would be that'd be a great amenity for yeah. you know, the beginning of Western uh, you know, uh, West Brattleboro. Yeah. I, I to, to Spoon's point earlier, I, it is a little odd that um, and maybe the planning commission is. Uh, dealing with this, but I do find it a little odd that this is a residential zone, you know, yeah. right along the road um, in Western, uh, in West Brattleboro on Route, on Route 9. You know, there's quite a, a lot of commercial activity there now, and well, to designate the su the that site as used non conforming to be a, is not, doesn't yeah, make a lot of sense. The site a long time ago used to be a, there used to be a furniture mill there, which is the foundation work that's behind there. Yeah, it's yeah. the village of Centerville. It's, it's the village of Centerville. 1857, there was yeah. a village mm -hmm. there, and these buildings are, you know, sort of remnant of that. And yeah, I don't know that it makes, a, from a planning perspective, I'm not sure if people want to build any houses out here. Yeah. It just doesn't seem to be a good fit. It would be nice if the planning commission would rewrite those zoning. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> planning commission. <laughs> so that's the next thing on the list, isn't yeah. it? Right. Go where? Yeah. He's the chair of the planning commission. Yeah. So is, is the, on the uh, elevations, is there, uh, you're changing the pitch of the roof? I, I, I don't know that I oh, saw the so existing. existing. Yeah, the existing yeah. is a little thing that's being torn down. So um, I don't know if we included elevations here. Yeah, I don't know if there's an existing elevation, but I don't think we did. Is the we didn't think it pretty close? 
No, it's quite a bit bigger. Quite a bit bigger. bigger. Yeah, it's a bigger footprint. Um, that was a small building. Yeah, I, I, I see the the, um, yeah, the existing conditions showing the, the buildings it's much smaller. Yeah, here's the the footprint of the existing building is there, so it's yeah twice oh, okay. two and a half times and quite a bit bigger with a with a different roof and a whole cupola thing on the top and an open sort of timber frame environment inside. Yeah. So it'll be pretty nice. Got some daylight coming in from the top and on the gable end. And then some real bathrooms for traveling public as well, which is, a, I think, a nice amenity. And remind me, what, what retail will happen in there? It's a neighborhood market. Just grocery, produce. Convenience, convenience items. Convenience items. But, but not, this, not the same product as this. No, it be complimentary. Not the same product. Yeah. You want your coffee and your food. Those things you have to walk over to the country deli again. Okay. Compliment the deli, Compliment. but not... Interesting. Uh, not that it matters to the board, but the idea is to, to folks who are you know stopping to get coffee and heading up to the yeah. mountain might pick up some groceries then, too. Yes, yes. I've also had conversations with the Chamber of Commerce to see if we can do a little bit of information booth type of, type of hmm. thing in there, too. So, is there going to be a separate name for this? We're, we're batting around <laughs> names, <laughs> and you know, it may it may be something like the Centerville Market or something like that. <laughs> is there any, um, in as much as you're putting in a permeable surface there, does it make sense to have a condition that requires that it's maintained as a permeable surface. Hmm. I don't think we've ever done that, but it's because it, I mean, you're saying that over time, yeah, if it gets blinded, oh, it'll, it'll lose vacuum it. it out. You have you would lose it'll it. It'll lose it, and yeah. if 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 it's a concern to reduce the runoff, mm -hmm. although right now it all runs off. Right? It does. Yeah. Right. So uh, yeah. The only thing about that spoon, and it's a, it's a good idea, but I always worry about. Handing to the zoning administrator a condition of a permit that's you know un, unenforceable. And how would how would the zoning administrator ever know if the applicant has vacuumed up the grout? You know what I mean? Well, it just they it. wouldn't. It would only be the only thing that occurred to me, and maybe it's unimportant. Such time, ten, twenty years down the road, for some reason, the runoff is a problem then someone can look back and say, mm -hmm. well, this, uh, the owner's responsible for renewing that surface mm -hmm. to reduce mm -hmm. that runoff. No, I mean, it, the applicant is, as part of the application, the applicant is representing that there will be a reduction in the surface runoff. That's a consideration that we are, right. you know, uh, using in our uh, review and approval of the application. I think it's ap appropriate to put it in there. Um, I'm, I'm just not optimistic that it has the ability to enforce that is great, but I, I will um, ask that the application, the, I'm sorry, the motion to approve include that amendment. I think that, that makes sense. So what I do is I just go around with a gallon of water and just... <laughs> yeah. That's good. Check it out. In your spare time? <laughs> yeah, actually, when I go to the farmer's market or to the new... This is a speaker around here. Any other questions uh, from members of the board? Any members of the public have questions or comments regarding this application? Uh, so... Looking for a motion to approve uh, application 2014 uh, with the additional condition that the applicant um, maintain the pervious uh, pavers um, such that they continue to function as pervious pavers. So moved. Moved. Seconded. And seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Uh, and I abstain, and before I close the hearing, I will hear from the zoning administrator. Could you clarify what you're approving as far as signage goes? Um, the, as requested. Yeah. Um, I, what was the matter? All right, thank, thank you. you very thank much. Thank you for your support. Uh, looking to...
your application 2014-045. Dean and Barrett et al. Uh, for Gloria Barrett Life Estate. Request for flat approval to create a second parcel at 154 Oak Grove Avenue. Please tell us about your project. Good evening. I'm Steve Barrett. <clears throat> I'm uh, coming before you to look at creating a, a second parcel at number 154 Oak Grove Avenue. That was my mother's house. Um, <clears throat> she passed away last fall. So we're looking at selling the property. Um, we pretty much always assumed that there was an extra lot um, that came with the house. And then as we did some research, we discovered that the um, the, the lot where the house is is actually smaller. And pretty much we know why, because we have photographs that shows this house and virtually the, all the rest of Oak Grove Avenue vacant uh, and just a field. So this is one of the original houses um, on Oak Grove Avenue. My great-grandfather um, lived there and the rest of the family throughout for a few generations. So we're looking at, um, at this point, to um, create this lot. And the, uh, so just to make sure I understand, so the, the, the lot is existing, you're just proposing to move the boundary line? and The boundary line so that the, the parcel that the, the, the house is on is a conforming lot. Okay. So without that, it's my understanding that um, the lot, it, it can't be a lot, um, you can't just separate because the lot wouldn't be conforming where the house is. Yeah. There's, there's so in other words, you're making you're making two legal lots. One has the existing house, yeah. and then the other lot would be conforming to build a house if somebody so chose. Yeah, and I, I, I recall I don't practice in this area enough to be sure, but I think Vermont is a jurisdiction in which automatically combines a that's right a, a, a conforming and a non-conforming lot yep. to make them. So if you tried to separate, you can't separate the ownership. That's my understanding yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, everyone understand that? So, so they just it, it, sometimes people get around it by creating two like limited liability companies, yeah. you know, just to having a different legal ownership in those lots, so they don't automatically merge. So this lot, by law, is probably automatically merged That's into right. one conforming lot, and right. now we're just going to separate it into two two conforming lots. Yeah. So I think the only, well, maybe one of the very few questions is, you know, will will each of these lots be conforming after the subdivision? Yes, they will. And the tract two, the um, undeveloped lot, uh, that'll have uh, a curb cut off of Oak Grove Avenue. Um, that's correct. Yeah. And that's just a residential just a street, curb, and yeah. you'd expect to see a curb cut there. And there is a, you show a setback um, line and it appears that there's sufficient room to build a structure inside that setback and right. not only would the lot be conforming but then the structure would be conforming as well. That's correct. Okay. Any other members of the board have questions or comments regarding this application? Nice to have a good survey. Yeah, it is nice, isn't it? Um, any members of the public have questions or comments regarding this application? I'm looking for a motion to approve application 2014-045 as submitted. So moved. Moved. Second. And seconded. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. I abstain. That carries 601. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's when I come before this, or the planning commission, I will make that suggestion. If the zoning administrator had the ability to approve a subdivision of conforming lots in a municipal district without additional municipal services. Right? Do you want to answer any questions? Yeah, sure. I have to look at my slides. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll call application 2014-051, Stevens & Associates for Triple T Talk. Hi. Right, please tell us about your project. Well, before I do that, um, Mr. Barrett has offered to stay long enough to answer any questions if you have any for him, um, but he did, he's uh, doing that out of the kindness of his heart because I asked him. <laughs> okay. He'd like to go. Uh, well, maybe we'll start with Mr. Barrett then. Uh, does the town uh, and the planning, uh, I'm sorry, the um, 
Works. Public Works, thank you. Public Works Department, have any uh, comments the, regarding this application? The Public Works Department has um, actually worked with Stevens and Mr. Mallory on this project, and um, this this calls for a washing station and a grit uh, separator, which which uh, we approve of. I mean, uh, <coughs> this wash station is acceptable and meets all our standards. So. I didn't know if there's any other questions, but I just wanted you to know that, that we uh, work very closely with the engineer and the owner um, to make this project work. One thing that's not on this plan that he suggested afterwards uh, was to add a manhole at the connection where we come off the street. So maybe you could make that a condition of your approval because um, it's not reflected on the submittal that you have, but it's something that DPW would like. And you're fine with that. Yeah, it makes sense because well, we're connecting two services at that location. That's great because that saves us the hassle of asking questions that I didn't understand. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad the Public Works Department is waiting. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so, so, with that, please yeah, tell us yeah, about yeah, right. um, The sledding just got a lot easier. Right. The application is for Triple T Trucking. Um, Mallory Properties owns three properties along uh, Vernon Street, or Route 142. In general, we folks know where I'm talking about the facility mm -hmm. being, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and this application this evening is to make part of what is currently an impervious gravel parking lot into a concrete slab where trucks could be washed. Um, it is the middle property that I've highlighted here. Um, this is the new building that was built 10, 12 years ago, Norm? Yes. And um, they parked the trucks back there. And uh, so we've come up with a strategy where we can wash the trucks um, and collect that wash water, which is going to be better for the environment than just letting it um, wash into the ditch and then eventually down the stream. Um, so we've worked with DPW. We're going to connect the slab through a gutter system into the municipal sewer system. So like the car washes you see around town, the wash water will go to the municipal sewer system where it should. Oh, um, I didn't know that. That's where that's where the car wash wastewater yep. goes? Yep. In the municipal system? Yep. Hmm. Um, so we've received an allocation from the town for mm -hmm. that additional flow. Um, there will be an oil grit separator first so that the dirt that's coming off the cars will separate out into this chamber that's underground. Um, it will also collect the oil, any oils and uh, then go through a new sewer service constructed, connect into the sewer main underneath Vernon Street. I um, want to be clear because this was important when I was talking to the state. We're just washing the outside of the trucks. We're not washing inside the trash trucks. Um, that, that wouldn't be a good idea. So it's just the outside of the trucks. It's just to keep the trucks professional and looking clean. Does one Fair wash assessment? the inside of a truck? Nope. Ever? No. Nope. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Which explains the smell. <laughs> there we go. Yep. But from an environmental standpoint, we don't want to be introducing what's called leachate into the environment. So you don't wash the outside of those trucks. Um, so that's the quick synopsis. You know, um, we're not changing the grade out there. It's an existing impervious gravel driveway. It's already an impervious surface. We're keeping an impervious surface. We are in a floodplain, not a floodway, but a floodplain. Um, we're not raising the grade. We're not changing the grade. We're not doing anything that should affect any flow. Um, the oil grit chamber, the structure that's going to be underneath the ground, um, will have to be watertight. We have to get a state permit for this connection to the sewer. And that'll be dictated by them that we leak test that tank and make sure it's watertight. So um, we're covered there as far as following through on making sure that happens. Um, and we have a strategy that we've talked through with the state of Vermont because they weren't sure what, quite what permit to give us. Um, so we're going to have a watertight cover where the wash, where the vehicles are washed. There's going to be a watertight cover so that rainwater won't go in there. We don't want to send rainwater to the municipal sewer plant. Um, so there will be a, it'll have a rubber gasket and it'll get latched down on top of uh, the opening here so that it's just wash water that's going in there. And when the workers are done, um, they'll reinstall that. So 
That's it. Um, there's an, an added advantage to doing this slab, which is that when Norm replaces this slab, which is for the sorting station, the transfer facility as I call it, when he replaces this slab, um, the state would allow him, if he wanted to, to just start dumping garbage on the ground for a couple weeks while he pours new concrete. Mm -hmm. um, but instead of doing that, Norm would like to have a concrete surface to be able to do that on. And so that will be kind of an added benefit of having this slab available to use for a few weeks. Anything to add to that, Norm? No, it just takes, uh, <clears throat> it takes about 30 days to cure your floor. In the past, we've uh, replaced our floor, but it, it, right off the start with it starts getting damaged because we close on like a Friday and Monday we open back up again. Mm. So even though we have an 8-inch floor, it's, it's in jeopardy right off to start with because <laughs> yeah. we're not letting it cure. Uh, so this way, uh, uh, we'll be able to let it cure and by using the outdoor facility, uh, it'll get a chance to cure until we move back on to it. And it doesn't last very long. <laughs> it, it chews it up pretty much. You're dumping demolition screws and bolts and so the concrete gets beat up constantly. So and the softer it is, uh, the quicker it goes. So we need that curing time. Although the state will let me dump completely right on the ground uh, with a permit. Uh, and that's not really what I want to do. We have enough problems. It doesn't seem like a good thing for the environment to just be <laughs> dumping that on the ground. Uh, thank you. Any other members of the board uh, have questions or comments regarding this application? There are no members of the public. I stuck it out to put your hand, so I'm looking for an application to approve matter 2014-051 with the additional condition that the applicant add a manhole at the connection to the street. It's actually, we're going to connect to the service of, um, I'm going to get the address wrong. Why don't we call it the, uh, the sorting facility? At the sorting okay. facility. So we're connecting that service to a new service to the sorting facility service. And so um, we're going to, we'll add the manhole. Add the manhole as at that location. By DPW. Yeah. Fantastic. So moved. Moved. And seconded? Seconded. Seconded. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. I abstain. That carries 601. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Right. Well, those were all good, good applications, weren't they? <laughs> uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. Actually, could you guys do oh. the minutes? Sure. Um, minutes. Right, right. I know. Sorry, man. I didn't know they were here. Uh, looking for a motion to approve the minutes from April 22nd to 21st, rather, 2014. So second. Moved and seconded. Um, any further comments? Any additionals? Any edits? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that carries 701. There we go. Thank you, Frank. Uh, and I move to adjourn. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. And we are.